Star TV Academy came about when I came to the school six or uh, eight years ago now. I, um, I came in here as a full-time PE teacher, but basketball has always been a passion of mine um, and it served its purpose to me well as, as a juvenile. It taught me a lot of things from discipline to introduce me to different friendship groups and it opened the doors later in life to opportunities at university and so forth. And I felt if, uh, if I could instill a program here at the school, that would help kids to move forward with their basketball abilities that they might reap the benefits later in life as well. And that's slowly starting to take shape at the moment. My experience in basketball taught me many things. Uh, as a player, uh, I had to deal with many issues such as when I was injured. I had to deal with issues of the coach sitting me on the bench. I had to deal with issues about our teammates, trying to involve them and, and also trying to get on with them and coexist with them. As a coach, I see these similar issues with my players. Uh, I see the effects the injuries have on them. I see the dynamics between the players. And anytime there's an issue or something I have to deal with, I sometimes take a step back from the coach's position and go back to when I was a player and put myself in their shoes. And that helps me deal with any issues that arise the best possible way. And there's been quite a few examples of that this year, from injuries to, to players not getting on with each other, some friction within the team, and also some anxiety and psychological battles. Some of these players have, some of our better players, in fact, are the ones who are most anxious. And I can go back to my own playing days when I went through this as a player, <clears throat> and I can advise them on what to do and help them move forward. And, and I think my experience as a player has been invaluable to me, um, being a better coach and it's something I would always uh, use as a tool to reflect back on. Uh, at this moment in time, I feel the academy is where I wanted it to be. So looking back three years ago, if I was to ask myself where do I want to be and where do I want this academy to be in terms of what we've achieved and what we're doing, um, I would have been quite happy with where it is right now. So to answer the question, the academy is in a good position right now, I feel. In terms of future growth, I think it's something I will always try to grow and I will always try to introduce different systems and different provisions for these players. But with the, na the nature of the environment we're in, I feel that there's a, there's a roof to what we can do at Lambton School with a basketball academy. I think it serves its purpose academically in, in, in a big way and that's the major focus behind it, to help pupils excel in the classroom and also to excel as human beings and become better people. This is something that we will continue to grow and this will be the main focus of it. But moving forward as the players get to the age of 16 and upwards, so when it's time to go to the college or sixth form, I feel there is a roof and there's a limit to what we can do because of the nature of the environment we're in. If this was a college, it might be a little bit different or if it was uh, a national institute which you have around the country, then we have funding for better facilities, uh, we have funding for full-time strength and conditioning coach, but because we're a secondary school, um, we won't be able, more than likely, to serve that, uh, to provide that for the players. So where we are with the program, I'm really happy moving forward. I have more ideas I'd like to do, um, such as more international trips to give these players some exposure to coaches and, and uh, what their talent is like in other parts of Europe um, and hopefully further field maybe America. So there's still a lot I want to do. Uh, moving forward there's on the basketball court there's still a lot I want to do and change to make it better and I find myself evaluating the program on, on a weekly basis and especially now this time of year that the season is finished I will spend a lot of time trying to sit down and work out ways I can make this better for September and move forward. So we will continue to grow and we will continue to change the program for the better. Uh, my motto in life I feel is something I've changed. 
um, over time. If you were to ask me a few years ago, I would have said before I, before I became a teacher and basketball coach, I would have said you are going to find a job where I don't feel like I'm working. I'm going to find a job uh, that doesn't fit the, the, the stigma attached to the word job. I want to do something that I really enjoy, that fulfills me and, and, and benefits me as well. Um, and my motto off the back of that is I want to leave uh, this place wherever I am at that moment in time. I want to leave it a better place than when I arrived. Um, and my motto really is based on the fact that we're not here forever, no matter where you are. Um, whether it's this job, another job, or, or this world. And I, and I simply want to make uh, the place I'm in presently a better place than when I leave, than when I came. Motivating players can be one of the trickiest aspects for a coach. Initially, motivation is not a problem because the kids turn up because they want to be there. Uh, but to keep them there can be difficult. And I find to motivate them, I often use the older players. Uh, we use them as role models, so the younger ones will look up to them. Uh, other ways I motivate them is by sharing some successful su success stories that other players have had. Um, I'm looking up that I coach at a high level outside of the school uh, with the national team, and I share these stories with them each time I come back from a training camp. And this serves as a, a big motivational factor. And I just want to, I constantly remind them, I don't want you to have any regrets in anything you do, so give it your best shot. So it's a constant reminder of just being the best you can be. And I think that's one of the most powerful motivating factors for these guys. Attitude, dedication, and coachability. I think it's a partnership. I think to ask that question, uh, to answer that question and give you a straightforward answer is very difficult. I think that answer requires a, a much detailed uh, answer, let's say. Um, but it might, if I was to sum it up, I think it's a partnership. I think we make each other. These boys definitely challenge me to be a better coach. And, and in turn, I challenge them to be better players and better people. Um, and I think both we are growing together in, in, in that respect. And I think once that continues, that challenge continues, I think this is how we move forward, how I move forward personally as a coach, and how these guys move forward as, as an individual, and collectively how we move forward as a team. So I don't think one may, I don't think one is, you can single one out as this is, this makes this. I think we make each other better every day once we continue to challenge each other. What I would say, have fun, um, and, I, and, and I would just, just want them to really want to be there for the fun aspect more than anything else. If you have aspirations and dreams to get better, I think that all starts from a dream. And I would like the players to come in with, a, with a, a dream and aspirations to one day, you know, I remember when I was a kid myself, I, I would put myself in situations where I'd be playing out the backyard and in my mind I'm playing in the NBA. I could be on the Chicago Bulls court and I think this is what drives you to become a better player. All the great ones have gone through this phase and gone through this process. But anybody starting the game, wanting to join basketball, come have some fun, really enjoy it. And if it's uh, something you want to continue doing, and something you want to continue to get better at, then we'll focus on you know, implementing some skills program and take it from there. But initially, let's just have some fun and, and take it from there and see where it goes. Uh, skills we learn in basketball, I feel that transfer to everyday, your everyday life are, are numerous and, and almost too many to mention. But to, to pick a few and highlight a few, I think the discipline and, and dedication that you you give to basketball, to, to be in the gym every morning at 7 a.m., to come back again in the after, after school when your friends are going to the park, especially this time of year when the sun is shining, it, it really takes a certain level of discipline to continue to do this. I think it's easier in the winter, even though people say it was dark mornings and stuff, but it's a lot easier to be inside in those months. And you really find out who the disciplined ones are and the ones who are really dedicated to the cause, you know, coming months of June and July. Um, so discipline is, is a big one. I think it, uh, it teaches these guys how to be punctual. We have a rule uh, in, the, in the academy, if you come in 30 seconds late, it's the same as coming in 30 minutes late. Um, so punctuality is a big one. 
And I think we have we've even still quite a few rules. Um, off, off the top of my head, we have a we have a couple of set rules that if you walk past rubbish anywhere, as an academy player, we expect you to pick it up even if it's not yours. Um, and the reason I put that in is I want these guys to understand that you need to leave this place better than when you came, number one. And also, no job is too little for you to do. Also, we have another one that we want to be courteous to people and say please and thank you. And these guys are players, including myself, we don't do it all the time. But we're striving to do it all the time. Um, so I think if folk, it, the, the real bones of the academy in terms of what can we, what is transferred to the real world, I feel discipline, punctuality, respect for others, and leaving the, play, leaving the world a better place than, than when we got here. The passing lanes here, anticipating the passing lanes there. Anything that goes below the free throw line either side, we got these two trapping, okay? So now, you guys who are left by yourselves, three in the line, and they're doing a hell of a job. You're coming across taking this away, you're coming across taking middle, you're coming across taking this. They get out of it, everyone scramble back. If he catches the ball in these areas, he needs to see shooters in these corners, okay? So Jarrell, Zabby, whoever it is, yeah, yeah, you guys gotta drift to the corner and see him when he catches the elbow. If he catches in the block, all right, and he's outside the block, I want you guys to cut through and let him go to work. You're in no man's land because you haven't made a decision. You've got to make a decision and you've got to commit to that decision. We made a decision to fast break, but we have to commit to the fast break. We got to, if we're going to commit, it's everything or nothing. It can't be halfway. And on the ball defense right now is killing us. Killing us. Get back in our stance, our active stance, with feet alive, ready to react. There's nothing difficult right now, other than the fact that you've got to make a decision that I'm ready to react. I'm ready to play on the defense end of the floor. Nainad, you had numerous opportunities to make a second curl, get a layup. Yeah, yeah, you had one as well before I took you up, and you're just filling up. There's nobody here. If you fill up and there's nobody in your path, go ahead and curl it again. You suck the defense down. No, we're just down, guys. The last two or three possessions, we've just allowed guys to split two guys, or we've just allowed ourselves to bleed out the dribble. Now, last and focus on the next play, but you better revise this right now, analyze it, move on, and correct it. Offensively, any pass is made set. on the perimeter, let's get an interchange, right. okay? If you can't make a pass, dribble exchange, play from there. Four out, one in. Let's go. On defense, we're going 2-2-1 two, two, press. 2-2-1 okay? two, 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 into a 2-3 zone, very active. Uh, we've had quite a few, we've had a few successes at Lambton in terms of team-wise and individuals have had some success. We've had guys chosen on the national team, uh, the development squad national team, should I say. We've had uh, some success with the Final Fours coming third in our conference in the, in the Nationals last year. And we've had a lot of success locally. What comes with success uh, can be a, a lack of attention to detail. You know, and, and I think this is something that I remind them. You know, um, we have a saying, uh, it, escape, it escapes me right now. What comes, with, oh, what comes with success is complacency. What can come with success can be complacency. And this is something I remind them when we're having these moments of success, that guys, great job, enjoy it, soak it up, really make the most of it because we don't have these opportunities. They don't come every day. But also, stay humble, keep your, keep your, your feet to the ground, and don't get complacent. So there is, the, there is the reminder that this is great, this is brilliant, I want you to make the most of it. But remember what we are about, what our motto is, what we live by, what our standards are, and don't get complacent. I've learned a lot from these players. Um, I continue to learn a lot from them daily. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, they challenge me to be better as a coach. They force me to go away and plan good sessions. They force me to go away and plan individual sessions for different individuals. They've taught me many things from being more patient. For example, or some of our older players, and Elmi is an example, Yaya Mohindin is an example, Rajan is an example, there's, there's too many to mention, who coach the younger year sevens and eights. And sometimes I will take a step back from, the, from some of these games and let these guys coach and just be an observer. And when I watch them coach, I found myself a few times driving away, reflecting on how they delivered their instructions to the kids. 
and it made me think, you know, I think I need to do this a little bit better in terms of maybe I need to be more patient. Maybe I need to tone it down a little bit and be less intense because I can see how certain, all players are different. Every player responds to something differently and I see how certain players have responded well to their coaching delivery, their coaching style. So they've actually taught me a few things from the coaching side which I didn't expect. They've also taught me that I don't think, as adults, I don't think we give these guys credit for how mature they are um, and how mature they can be. You know, we see a 14 or 15 year old, a 13 year old, sometimes I'm generalizing right now, but I feel us as adults, we don't appreciate their level of maturity, their level of knowledge, but I see it on a daily basis and I saw it at 7 a.m. this morning when I walked into the gym and there was three year nines coaching the under 13 team that's going to be going to the national finals this weekend. And I stood back for half an hour and I just left them do it. And to watch it was a joy. The way they, the way they organize these guys is impressive. How they speak to them is absolutely hugely impressive. I, I, I couldn't, couldn't be any more complimentary of it. And I, I think we just need to give them more credit for, for what they are, what they do, how mature they are, and how organized they can be. Um, but as a coach, I've learned loads from these guys and learning about their relationships, about who they are and their family, about what they want to be in their future, and so forth and so on. But if you want to talk about measurable things I've learned from them, they've taught me how to use IT better. They've taught me how to edit games better. Um, so I have taken away some skills I can add to myself. But the major thing I've learned from these players is that they're more mature, they're more responsible, and all these characteristics that I want them to develop in life, they're actually better than I expected. So they've told me that the younger generation, I think, is, is better than they give it credit for it as, as a general statement. I think the future for the academy looks good. Uh, personally, uh, I don't really know where I will be in five years if you ask me. Do I want to move forward? Yes, I do. If that means leaving Lampton, then that may potentially be the case. But with the academy moving forward, I would like to think it would be in safe hands. And this is something I've been considering, considering the past year. And I would love one day to come back and see one of my players I've coached uh, in my shoes, running the basketball academy, working for Lampton School full time, have a good, solid, a good job, good foundation, and hopefully they can make the academy better than I had. As I said, you leaving the place better than when I got here. So moving forward, the academy, I think it's it's future safe. The school is very supportive of the basketball academy, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, but I would love one day to come back here and see one of my players, one coach currently running the academy and I'm sure they will do a, a far better job than I than I've been doing.